Welcome to the Accelerate Church broadcast. We believe you will be inspired and encouraged to follow God and His Word when you hear Pastor Jeremy preach today on the sermon series, The Blessing or the Curse. Let's head into the sanctuary now for that wisdom and insight he shares from God's Word. You don't have to put up with the curse. You don't have to put up with living without the blessing. But if you don't know what either one are, you're going to keep living in the ignorant land, which is not fun at all. It's also known as barely get along street. Depression alley, right? Uh huh. Going around the same mountain over and over again. Always moving but going nowhere. That's a sign of the curse. I want to tell you there are some curses that will hang around your life like leeches. Leeches are pretty nasty if you don't know. I saw in a commercial a guy was, had leeches on him. That lady was trying to pull it off. I don't remember where I saw that now, but I was like, oh, man. That's what the curse does to a lot of people. It gets a hold of you, leeches on, and because it doesn't kill you instantaneously, some people are okay living with the curse. And some of them will stay until you resist them. Write this down. We are anointed by God to resist the devil. We are anointed by God to resist the devil. You don't need to sit here and pray that the Lord would, you know, punk out the devil. He already did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Then he handed you the authority that he purchased through that transaction that you didn't earn or deserve. Are you listening today? So what are you going to do about that? You know, the devil breaks loose. He tries to attack. He, he will try to attack. He's tried to attack me this week. But guess what? I stand up here anyway and preach the word of God. I don't care. The devil's a loser. I resist him. Do you resist him? You're anointed to resist him. That's why James, the first pastor, the half-brother of Jesus. Now, why was he half-brother? Because Jesus... Uh, was conceived in a virgin, right? By the Holy Spirit. If you don't know, that's a basic doctrine that you better hold on to because if Jesus wasn't virgin born, then you're not born again on your way to heaven. But because he was, and because he followed through, and because of the joy before him, he endured the cross. He rose again. Then he gave his keys. Man, we got things to look forward to here. Amen? But uh, that wasn't the only baby that Mary had. You see, her and Joseph got married. She had several other babies, and two of them wrote books in the Bible. Jude is one of them. James is another one. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if you came here, you didn't know that. This, welcome to Bible school. Some people never know that. I mean, they don't know that. They come to church, and they don't know stuff like that. It's good for you to know. Here's another thing that's good for you to know. Uh, scholars say this, that neither one really believed he was the Messiah until after the resurrection. Because they're so familiar. And if you're too familiar... It'll snipe you of what God's doing. I deal with that a lot as a pastor, you know. It's easy in a, when, when you're the pastor, the local pastor, for people to get so familiar that they miss the gift of God. But YouTube preacher that they're not very close to, they don't know his lifestyle. Wow, I can receive heavy revy from him, man. He's bringing it. Well, you better be careful what spirit's driving you to receive from these guys that you don't know anything about the fruit of their life. That's something I've had to learn that not everything that glitters is gold. Even in the church. You know, the scriptures, uh, this is, I'm freestyling here for a moment. i got some good things to show you this morning, teach you. But, but let me just say this. This comes to my mind. That Paul wrote and said that the devil can appear as an angel of light, even a preacher of righteousness. Which angers me because that's what I am. But that means not everyone that's even preaching to you necessarily is preaching it right. You're going to have to know the word for yourself. Say it with me this morning. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. So James, the half-brother of Jesus, so you understand that statement, he said this in James chapter 4, verse 7, Submit yourselves, King James says. I like King James on that. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. New King James on the screen says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil... And he will flee from you. Not he might, he may be, he will. He will. But King James, because it words it this way, I went back and looked at this, didn't add it to the notes, says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. you got to understand something this morning. No one can submit to God for you. Your mom and dad can train you in the way you should go. They can put you even in Christian school. They can do everything that God's given them the ability to do to train you the right way. But when you're an adult, you have to submit yourself to God. There comes a day in all of our lives that we have to say, you know what? I surrender all. That's an act of submission to God. 
If you don't get that part, you might as well forget the resisting part, which I came to talk to you about this morning for a moment. You've got to resist the devil. You know what this says to me? Everything the devil brings with him, which he's the one that empowers the curse, you've got to resist that. So when I read this, I was like, I'm not only going to resist the devil, I'm going to resist the curse. And it will flee. If the devil will flee when I resist, then guess what? The curse will flee when I resist. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for Lifelinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding Lifelinks and where they meet, you can text the word Lifelinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at accelerate.church.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. There's a reason a lot of people can't effectively resist the devil or the curse. You know why? Because God uses the fivefold ministry, the mighty hand of God. And He says, Submit yourselves to that. What? The mighty hand of God, and He will exalt you. So most people are doing life their own way. They say, I don't need a preacher. I don't like organized religion. I just, me and daddy, we have our own relationship. I crawl up in daddy's lap every day and talk to him. And that's the way people act. Folks, I've been told that. That's why I use that expression by more than one person. It's kind of a catchphrase in our day. You know, me me and daddy, we're so close. Well, if you're not submitted and you don't have a pastor in your life, you're not close with God. You're going to get goofy. Or are you saying I can't have a relationship with God? I didn't say that. I said you're going to get goofy. And then when the devil comes, you'll find that your resistance, instead of a 45 hollow point, it's a water pistol. That doesn't even work right. One over there from Dollar Tree or something, you know? One of those real cheap ones. Not one of those expensive ones you find on Amazon. Are you listening to me? See, people, they, they think, well... Submission's not that big a deal. It has everything to do with your resistance power. And some of you are never going to break free from the curse. Even when I preach this, even when I expose it to you, we're going to go down a list and we're going to start today. This is the curse. This is the curse. This is the curse. And not, not so you're depressed, but so you're encouraged. And so you recognize, wait a minute, that's in my life. And I'm going to encourage you today. Resist that. Resist that. Some of you aren't going to be free till you resist it. If the curse is hanging over your marriage, until you resist that, what? The curse, the devil. Submit to God. Get in your lane. If you're a wife, read the wife's scriptures and do that. If you're a husband, read the husband's scriptures. Do that. We make this thing too complicated. Well, you don't understand. Well, God does. He created you. So how dare you speak against the authority of the Word of God when it says, Husbands, love your wife like Christ loves the church. Well, I can't. I don't know how. Ask the Lord for help. None of us know how, guys. Get with the program. And any dude that tells you he does, that dude's lying. He needs help from God. And all the women said, amen. None of the guys are going to say amen because there's some, some jokers in here think they got it together. But you're on your third marriage. So I, I told that the other day. It's so funny. When I was engaged with Aaron, I had a friend in my life that had to be cut off eventually. And this man, he acted like he really had it together. Like he was telling me all this advice. Oh, she'll like this. You ought to do this. And so it even came down to this. I picked her engagement ring. And he talked me out of the one that I picked because there was another one that I could afford that was clear and a little bit bigger. So I went and bought that. And guess what? She didn't like that one. She didn't tell me for a while. But I sat there and thought to myself, wait a minute. Why was I listening to this guy? Why didn't I stop and think for a minute? He didn't even make his marriage work. Here he was divorced, giving me advice. What in the world? You know, this is the problem, and I'm on to something right here. The reason some of you have so much trouble in your marriage is you don't resist the real enemy, which isn't your spouse. 
It's the devil. And you've got to resist the temptation to ignore what he told you to do, husbands and wives, and you're just doing your own thing. Well, it'll work. Well, did it work before? No. Well, then why are you doing it? Let's not be stupid. Amen. I'm not, that didn't come out real encouraging, did it? Well, unless you take heed, then you'll thank me later. Thank you, Pastor, for speaking plain to me. See, I need to speak plain because some of you are so foggy-headed when you come in here, you're still blaming your spouse. It ain't your spouse's problem. You're the problem. Your level of submission to God will determine your power in resisting the devil. If you tried resisting the devil and he just Peter rolls you anyway, you need to go check your submission. Are you listening to me? You say, well, I'll resist the devil, and then it's just like you're just flat. Just, you're laid out flatter than a pancake. <laughs> you know what happened? You, you didn't submit to God. Now, I've had it before. I love, I love everybody, and you know this. Some, I don't even remember all the details of all the stories of everything. So if, if this involves someone that's here, I'm not necessarily just honing in on you. I'm just prompted right now to say this, that I've had people come to my office, and I'll tell them something. They'll leave my office. They'll walk down the hallway, and before they could even get from one side of the building to the other, they, they do just the opposite. Just the opposite. Are you submitted to God? No. Why? Because God, if he called me to be your pastor, he put me right there. And so when I tell you something, and I tell you, I, I'm speaking as your pastor. I don't always speak that way. If I'm telling you, you know, you ought to root for the Cowboys, you can ignore that if you want. That's not from God. But if I look at you and say, look, as your pastor, I'm telling you, husband, you better love your wife this way. You better tell your children this, and you better put your foot down. You better love them God's way. And you leave there and do just the opposite. No wonder it doesn't work when you try to resist the devil later. See how the Lord will help you ahead of time? I just don't understand. Well, it's because you don't have any resistance power because you don't have any submission. I'm just going to tell you right now, anybody sitting up in here acting hard, I'm harder than you. i got a harder head. God anointed me with a harder head than you. So I'm just going to keep speaking this because I'm speaking from God. I like what James, he says, you're my OG. I said, be careful. We say that in public. People are going to think I'm a gangster. No one really thinks that in reality. He said, no, you're, you're an oracle of God in my life. He's telling me, I'm, that's the way he's saying, you're my pastor. Came to receive from God. Well, if you ever hear him stand up and say, oh, gee, he's not calling me gangster. I'm not an original gangster. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that. I'm here to preach the word to you. And this scripture, though many of you have known it, doesn't mean you're doing it. You've got to submit yourself and, and know this. When you do that and then you resist, the devil will flee. He will flee. And if he'll flee, then the symptoms of the curse will flee. You've just got to put your spiritual foot down. You know what I'm talking about? Shod with the preparation of peace. You know what I like? I was, I was listening to Rick Renner. He's a great preacher. He, he's in Russia. Be praying for him, by the way. And he's pastoring there in Russia. He was talking about the armor of God, and he talked about feet shod. The preparation of peace. And he said, when Paul wrote that, he was envi envisioning a Roman soldier that put on these boots that had spikes on them. They were lethal when they were in battle. You were wearing those, you poke somebody, they dead. <laughs> I'm telling you, when Paul was talking about it, he's not talking, oh, be peaceful, little one, little lamb. No, he's telling you, you're a warrior. And, and when it comes to the devil and him trying to keep the curse on your life, you've got to say enough is enough. You've got to say no. See, you've got to get your yielder in the right spot. Yield to God, resist the devil. A lot of people do just the opposite. They yield to the devil. Well, I feel sick. I don't feel like I think I'll just stay home. You know, the devil's worst nightmare is that you just stand anyway. And having done all, you keep standing. Okay, all right. Maybe I need to find a different sermon. What's going on here? Hey, when the curse tries to show up in your life, I've got a word for you. Resist it. That's two words. Resist it. When the curse shows up, you go into resistance mode. 
But see, you've already got, you, you should already be working on the submission thing ahead of time. That way you already got that. So as soon as you need to resist, you're ready. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. Our regional and international student conventions encourage and train our mighty warriors in competitions both academically and physically. With events in academics, athletics, exhibits, music, and platform, your student will be challenged and inspired to develop their God-given gift and talent. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website, at AccelerateChristianSchool.cc or you can call our office 806-418-8913. Some of you won't be able to resist what the devil's doing in your life and in your family and in your children until you get submitted to the man that God's called you to. 1 Peter 5.8 says it like this. People don't like that kind of preaching. I'm going to preach it anyway. I like Peter. He said, be sober. <laughs> It has several meanings, but, you know, just by definition, it means be free of intoxicants. Anything that would make you drunk, you got to stay away from that. Uh, let, do I need to go back to James? I think I do, see. I think I do. It says submit to God. Why am I not a sipping Christian? Is it because I took the Nazarite vow? No. Is it because I want to preach my convictions on people and make people feel bad because they love their course life? No, it's because I decided when I saw 75 scriptures, I'm going to submit to God. And when I submit to God, here's what I found out. The devil flees any temptation to drink. I mean, are you kidding me? I don't even have to say no now. It's just, I mean, I'm just automatically set on no. Well, if I invite a pastor for lunch, maybe he'll drink a little wine. Better be careful. I might break the bottle over your head. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that part. But I'm so submitted to God, I don't care what you think about it. Uh, you wouldn't believe, and I talk about it all the time, but see, I'm just going to let you know. I'm just going to let you know. I bring it up, and if you don't deal with that, don't sit here all high and mighty till I get on your thing. Are you hearing me? You're free from it? Great. And you're like, why are you bringing that up again? Because there's some among us, okay, streaming, okay, watching by television, listening by radio. I don't even know who it is. See, that's the thing. They can stay anonymous. They have a drinking problem. You know what? They have a submission problem. I was telling my wife this week, I was in a battle, and I said, you know, I, immediately, she could verify this. She started praying for me. I started praying. I started resisting the devil. I started speaking the life of God. I started speaking strength over my body in Jesus' name. I started all those things, and I said to her later, I said, you know, if I was a, a sipping Christian, I don't think I'd be confident to immediately go into that resistance mode. Why? Because I'd have an open door to the devil. Now, you're not going to hell because you drink a Coors Light, but you got an open door to a demon in your life. That's why I warn you so heavily. Either I'm a man of God or not, you need to ask yourself that question. And either I'm warning you from the truth or not, your drinking deal is a submission deal. Therefore, you don't have resistance power. Thank you. Hallelujah. Be sober, Peter said, 1 Peter 5 8. Be sober. You know, if that's all I preach, that'd be good enough for you today. Be vigilant, though. Be awake. Be aware. Watch. That's what that means. Why? What do I got to do that for? Because your adversary, you have an enemy that's loose. The devil, he walks about like a roaring lion. He makes a lot of noise. And it scares a lot of people. I've been preaching fear not for like eight weeks in chapel at our Christian school here. I'm telling you right now, the devil will roar. And when he roars, a lot of people do exactly what the Israelites did when Goliath roared. And said, send me a man to fight. They go hide under the rock somewhere. Do you believe in God? Absolutely. Are you on God's side? Yes. Why are you under a rock? Why are you hiding? Why is your lip quivering? God's with you. Well, the, 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 the devil. Uh, the what? The who? He's roaring. He's screaming. Oh, I know. He does that through the curse and the manifestation of the curse. 
and gets a lot of people just to go and get in a fetal position and never get out of it. I was talking to a man of God, and he was going through a lot. And he told me, he said, I would just go get in the fetal position at night. And I thought to myself, good. Not, I, I don't relate to that. I've been through a few wars myself, through battles, several battles. One thing I'm not going to do is just stay in that fetal position unless, unless I'm stretching. <laughs> then I'll get right back out of it. But you know, don't catch me sucking my thumb. We are soldiers in the army of God, my friend. All the devil's loose seeking whom he may devour. Here's how he knows. He brings the curse. Those that, oh, and stay under the weight of that curse all their life, that's the ones he can devour. But when he tries to bring something to you, you're going to go through tests, you're going to go through trials, you're going to go through storms, and guess what? When you stand strong anyway, it's like, oh, I can't devour that one. And the devil will always pick on the people with the least amount of knowledge. He does not want a battle. He doesn't want resistance. He wants to run over people and possess people. And ultimately take them to hell where he's going. But you've got to be sober. See, there's a reason the Bible tells you that. If you're not sober, you don't even know where the devil is. You don't know where his next attack is coming from. He's invisible. Have you caught up with that yet? He's going to roar and scare you. Those that are scared, those that get in fear, they're the ones he can devour. Those that resist, he's like, "Uh uh-oh, who do you think you are? He may double down. What are you going to do? Double down. On the word. Follow Jesus' example. When Jesus was tempted, what did he do? The devil took scripture out of context like a lot of preachers do nowadays. He tempted Jesus with with the word. Jesus was the word made flesh. But Jesus knew the word better than the devil. Do you? That's a problem if you don't. He'll get you hung up on something. Like Solomon in rebellion saying that that alcoholic wine is, is great. And people, they'll live their life based on that. Well, Ecclesiastes, they don't read any of the rest of Ecclesiastes, of course. They read that one scripture. Have you seen this? You say it's bad to drink. I'm like, well, have you seen the 75? I don't want to look at that. I know you'd rather be taken captive by the devil. Another scripture comes to mind, says, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices, lest he have an advantage. Here you are, a blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled Christian. That's what you're claiming, right? And yet, if you're ignorant, you ignore, it's the first part of ignorant, you ignore the devil's devices, such as alcohol, then he has an advantage. Why give him an advantage? This is a fight for your life. we got to fight this fight to the end. we got to keep the faith, folks. Let's do it. Let's be sober. Let's be vigilant. Is anybody with me? Why, the adversary, he's walking around seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. You got to highlight that in your Bible. This is what the Bible has to say about the devil. Resist him. So if you go and pray to God, and you say, God, resist the devil in my life. He's he's doing this and doing this and doing this. You're not going to hear anything unless you hear a rebuke. Why? He already told you to resist him. Who's going to resist the devil if you ignore the command to do it? The command was given to you, not your neighbor. For them, it was given to them. But I'm talking about in your life. The command wasn't given to Alex to resist the devil in my life. Or vice versa. Now, I'm your pastor, and I can help you and point you to scriptures like this. But if the devil's wreaking havoc in your life, if you see the curse in your life, you better start putting up some resistance. Come on, somebody. This is, uh, I can tell, this is like kale going down to some of your throat. You're, but you're going to take it anyway. You're going to eat those green peas today, you hear me? You're going to eat them Brussels sprouts. Yummy. Some of you are like, the only way I eat Brussels sprouts is if they're doused in butter. Well, there went the nutrition. They're supposed to taste bad for them to be good for you, right? <laughs> uh, resist the devil. Do what the Bible says to do when it comes to the devil. It doesn't say yield to him. It doesn't say bless his name. Heard about the testimony service? Somebody got the bless his holy name out of context. The lady started testifying and said, well, the devil was after me this week, bless his holy name. You heard about that? I think Larry was at that service. <laughs> He's been in a couple like that, for real. You know, that, the devil's name is not holy. Don't brag on the devil. Resist him. 
Look at your neighbor and say, I'm going to resist him. Stay steadfast in the faith. Wow, this gives us a clue. If it's not faith, there goes your resistance. Faith is that, is that shield that quenches all the fiery darts of the devil. That's what faith is. Faith has to do with God's will and nothing else. I already talked about it in this series. you got to have faith. you got to walk by faith, live by faith. Amen. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. What is this telling us? Keep your focus set on the word. Faith has to do with what God said and nothing else. So you keep your focus on what God said in the word. Resist the enemy and resist every curse that he tries to bring into your life. Now, we're going to shift in this series right now to this. If the Bible calls something a curse, you call it a curse. If the Bible calls something a blessing, you call it a blessing. And don't get your wires crossed. Let the word define what the blessing is and what the curse is. Not your opinion. Why do I say that? Well, I've heard some people say, well, after the Lord prospering, that ended up being the biggest curse in my life. The curse was your lack of character. Not the prosperity. The prosperity just revealed and amplified who you already were. I love, I love preaching like this when, when people are like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. The truth is coming out and slapping you both sides of the face. That's what's happening. In love, so you can grow up. You want to grow up? Or are you going to stay on the nipple your whole life with the bottle? No? Some of you, you know, the Lord still has the pastor part whiskers to put the bottle in. So you can take it. I, I can't handle this pastor. We'll shave and then we'll talk about it. Right? Are you listening to me? People, that's how they live. Been in church 30, 40, 50, some of them 60 years. You see, you preach like this. I don't like, I don't like the tone he's taking. I don't like the dogma you preach with. Well, get in line. When I read the word, I found out this is the truth. It's absolute. It's unbending. It's the same for everybody. In the deepest, darkest jungles of the Amazon to the dusty panhandle of Amarillo, it's the same. And let me tell you what's the same. You've got to resist the devil. And you got to call what God calls a blessing, a blessing. What God calls a curse, a curse. Well, this wraps up Pastor Jeremy's teaching on the blessing or the curse for today. Although there's much more to be heard from him. And you can access that online at our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. Under the Sermons tab, you'll find the blessing or the curse, along with everything else Pastor Jeremy has preached. And if you are in the area, we have a seat for you right here at Accelerate Church. We invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. or Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. in Amarillo. We're located at 4400 South Crockett. And again, we have a seat waiting for you. We're so glad you joined us on today's broadcast. We believe you'll be blessed as you apply God's Word.